Today I want to talk a bit about something called natural units. Now I'm, I'm sure many of you have heard this term before uh, in terms of maybe planks and natural units. So today I want to just uh, quickly talk about this and in particular I want to talk about the natural units of wave propagation. Okay, so um, I have a little law that I wrote. It's not really a law, it's just a statement. Fractal Woman's Law of Wave Propagation states that all waves propagate one quanta of space in one quanta of time. And here by quanta, I just mean quantity, but uh, in the long run, we want this to be a unit. So eventually I wanna be able to say that all waves propagate at one unit of space in one unit of time. But for the time being, I'm just gonna use the term uh, quanta. So all waves propagate one quanta of space in one quanta of time. And of course, this includes light. And so we're primarily going to be, although this can be applied to all waves, I'm going to uh, primarily be applying this to, um, to light. Okay, so um, if the quanta of space is one wave length and the quanta of time is one wave period, then we can say that light propagates one quanta of space in one quanta of time. So if we have a wave of a certain frequency and we know what the frequency is, then we know what the wavelength is and we know what the wave period is. And so if the uh, quanta, if the quanta of space is set to one wavelength of that frequency and the quanta of time is set to one wave period of that wavelength, then we can say that light um, propagates one quanta of space in one quanta of time. In other words, light uh, propagates one wavelength in one wave period, in one time period of the wave. So, I mean, this uh, might seem obvious to you, but I think it's important to state that if we set the quanta of space to one wavelength and the quanta of time to one wave period, then light propagates one quanta of space or one unit of space in one quanta of time or one unit of time. Now, in terms of units, this obviously is not a very practical unit because it only works for one frequency of light. So this only works for uh, I can only say this for the frequency of light with which this wavelength and wave period are, um, are applied to. And so in terms of measuring sticks, in terms of a maybe a uh, unit system, uh, it would not be practical to use this, although this would be the natural, what I would refer to as the natural measuring system of this particular frequency of light. So now, if we let the quanta of space be 299,792,458 meters, or approximately 300 million meters, and we let the quanta of time be one second, then we can say that light propagates one quanta of space in one quanta of time. Now, of course, this is, um, this is not, although this is a natural unit, this is a natural um, unit system. It would not be practical to have a unit of time equal to 300 million meters. There's no way we could um, print a, a measuring stick or you know, make a measuring stick that is 300 million meters long. It would not be practical to have rulers that are this long. And so this is why um, this measuring system is not chosen for our unit uh, system. But if, okay, now if the quanta of space is one meter and the quanta of time is one second, then we can't, cannot say that light propagates one quanta of space in one quanta of time because clearly light does not propagate one meter in one second. Instead, it propagates 
approximately 300 millimeters in one second. Okay, so this is not a natural unit uh, system. Okay, this is a system that humans develop for the convenience of making measurements at our scale of existence. And so one meter is approximately the length of our arm. We can easily um, print a ruler, make a ruler that is one meter long, and that becomes our measuring standard. And um, one second is approximately one heartbeat. This is a time that is easily measurable from our scale. So uh, although these uh, measure units are practical from uh, the scale of making measurements at the human scale, uh, these would not be uh, considered natural units. These are not natural units in terms of what light is doing. These are natural units in terms of maybe the human scale, but we absolutely cannot say that light propagates one uh, meter in one second. That simply is not true. These are not natural units, okay? So next, what we're gonna do is um, we're going to set the quanta of space to be one Planck length and the quanta of time to be one Planck time, okay? And so when we let the quanta of space or unit of space be Planck length and the quanta of time or unit of time be one Planck time, then we can say that light propagates one uh, quantity of space and one quantity of time. We can say that light propagates one Planck length in one Planck time. Now, interestingly, this does not matter. It does not matter whether you use Planck's constant, H, or reduced Planck's constant, H bar, in the calculations for Planck length and Planck time. You can use H or you can use H bar and you are still going to find that light propagates one quanta of space, one unit of space in one quanta of time or one unit of time. So here is Planck length uh, and Planck time calculated using H, using non-reduced Planck's constant. And here is Planck length and Planck time calculated using reduced Planck's constant. And so whichever of these you decide to use, uh, we can say that light propagates one Planck length in one Planck time. And this is the true meaning of what we call the natural units. In fact, these are the Planck natural units. So when you hear the term Planck natural units, and why are they called natural units? It's because um, we can say, we can, uh, it, um, it agrees with the statement, we can say that light propagates one Planck length and one Planck time, and so this makes these a very natural system to use as units, because unit means one, and so this is why they use the Planck units, because it, when they use the Planck units, they can reduce all the units to one, to the unit of one, uh, one quantity, okay, one quanta, one quantity, and so that is why they use uh, the Planck units, and that is why they're called uh, Planck natural units. Okay, but um, there's still a problem here because obviously, um, uh, 10 to the minus 35 is a very small number, and 10 to the minus 43 is a very small number. So in terms of a measuring system that can be, that's useful at the human scale, okay, these values are also, are still not very use, useful at the human scale. And so uh, basically um, we're kind of stuck with the unnatural units of um, the one, the meter and the second, although these are not natural units, these units are much easier to uh, use at the human scale. And um, these units are um, maybe more useful when you're playing around with the equations and you don't really care about the, the final value that you're calculating. Okay, and so this is why the Planck natural units are used. And I just wanted to make a quick video on this so that you could see 
um, see it the way that I see it in terms of uh, wave propagation. But in terms of wave propagation, I still think it's important to notice that light propagates one wave length in one wave period. Okay, the wave length, uh, waves are quantized by the wave length uh, in space and waves are quantized by the wave period in time. Okay, so in terms of quantization, I think it's important to, um, to recognize that light propagates one wavelength and one wave period and that the wavelength, the cycle, okay, the cycle is important. I think um, a lot of physics is done in radians and I think this is done for mathematical convenience and not for theoretical convenience. And so um, I think it's important that so in modified unit analysis, I focus on the cycle. Um, the frequency is cycles per second. Wavelength is meters per cycle. And the wave period is seconds um, per cycle. Okay. So um, this is why I developed modified unit analysis. And this is why I put the focus on the cycle and not the radians. And because I put the focus on the cycle and, and not the radians, then when I do my physics, I need to use Planck's constant and not reduce Planck's constant because reduce Planck's constant is calibrated to the radian. When you use re reduce Planck's constant, you have to use angular frequency and angular frequency has units radians per second, not cycles per second. When you use H, um, in the you know, Planck's energy equation, uh, you need to use, uh, when you use frequency, you need to use H. So when you're in the domain of the cycle, when you use H, you have to use frequency, which is cycles per second. Okay, so um, I think it's important, uh, like I said, I think it's important that we recognize that light propagates one wavelength of space in one wave period of time and that the wave uh, the whole wavelength is the universe's quantized frequency is quantized by the wavelength and the wave period okay i think i have um, made my point and um, i hope you guys have a great day